QuickBooks Online 2024, enter payroll for second month of operations. Get ready and some coffee because QuickBooks Online is even quicker to the trigger than Quick Draw McGraw. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time the reports on the left. In the favorites, right click in the balance sheet to open a link in a new tab, right click in the profit and loss to open a link in a new tab, right click in the trial balance to open a link in a new tab. Let's tab to the right, close the hamburger, and then we'll change the range. A 10124 tab, 022824 tab. We're going to select the drop down to see it month by month, run it, and then tab to the right. Ham boogie needs some closing, changing the ranging. A 10124 tab, 022824 tab. I should be putting 29, by the way. There's 29 days apparently in 2024, but 28 will still work. We're going to run it here and then do one more time. Closing up the ham boogie and change the range. 010124 tab, 022924. See, it's 29 days. And then we're going to say months and run it. Boom, that's the setup process. Let's go back to the balance sheet and think about what we're doing now, which is payroll for the second month of operations. You will recall in the first month of operations, we went through the payroll setup process and now we should be basically running smoothly and we can just process the second month of payroll. Although payroll is a little bit tricky when trying to work in a practice problem because usually you have to run payroll real time because that's how QuickBooks is set up. Let's give a quick recap with the payroll process in a uh, flowchart. This is the desktop flowchart, but we're just using it for the online purposes, just to look at the flow of the forms. We're in the payroll down below. Note that you could enter time, but we talked about the process of entering time often being used, not for payroll, but to, to then create invoices to bill the client in a job cost type system. But if you have hourly employees, you might also need that to process the payroll. We are now on this step, which is, means we're going to be paying the employees. And we often would do that. You can choose when to do that, usually weekly, semi-weekly, bi-monthly, or monthly. We chose monthly. So now we're on the second month and we're going to be processing payroll for the second month of operations. This will be generating the paychecks or electronic transfers and doing the withholdings, which includes federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare for the employee, and Social Security, Medicare, and FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax Act, for the employer taxes. And then we have to, to pay the liabilities that we took from the employees and our own payroll liabilities. And then we also have to process informational forms to prove that we've done what we're supposed to do to the government. That includes the form 941 quarterly filings, 940 end of year filings, W-2s and W-3s at the end of the year. Let's go back on over and go to the first tab here. And you'll see that if you have payroll on, then you're going to have payroll on the left hand side, recalling that payroll is one of those things. You want to think about how you're going to do it pretty in depthly before you just dive into payroll. It's not one of those things you want to tinker with. It's one of the things you want to get right the first time, typically, because fixing it is kind of problematic. It's like trying to put a door in a doorway and you cut the door too short. That's not the way you have to glue the door back together or something. That's not the way you want to do it. So, and so note that you can also do payroll 
uh, outside with an external payroll provider, possibly, in which case you wouldn't have to be processing all the payroll internally, possibly being able to then run your uh, QuickBooks system more on a cash-based system even, while the human resources and payroll are done by a third party, as long as you can also work with a accountant and bookkeeper that can do adjusting entries as needed for whatever is needed as the end of the year comes, such as for taxes and possibly external reporting. So just if you if you do payroll in QuickBooks, you're still gonna have to pay for it because you need the payroll processing. You could try to do it by hand, but I don't recommend it even if you only have a few employees because it's getting quite tedious uh, and the employees, frankly, are the most likely people to sue you or, or something if something goes wrong. So you don't really wanna mess up the payroll. You wanna pay your taxes and whatnot for payroll uh, even more so than your income taxes because if you don't, the government can can argue that you not only didn't pay your taxes, but you stole the money from your employees because you were forced to take the money from the employees in the form of withholdings and then didn't pay their taxes. So in any case, we're in the payroll on the left. We've set it up already. We've got the overview tab uh, on the first tab, and then we, we could go to the employees tab on the second tab. Here's our two employees. Let's just go ahead and run the payroll. Run it. And we'll go through the process. So last time we did it for January, I'm looking for February. So I'm gonna go for the period of February 1st to the 29th, noting that the payroll period could possibly differ from the date of the check, meaning we don't always have to have the period end on the same day that the check happens, although that's more likely possibly to be the case these days with electronic transfers, but you might some, want some kind of cushion between the two so you can process the payroll end, get the information necessary, such as timesheets, and then actually do the payroll possibly a couple days later. But in our case, it's gonna be the same. Uh, time edited, if we needed to do that, we can add the employees within here. Here's our summary of information. Normally, if everybody was on a salary basis and or if the time was pulling in automatically from the time entries for hourly employees, everything should get be the way it should be set up properly here and you can just roll forward with it but we're going to go into here so that we can see what is actually happening as well as do adjustments for our practice problem purposes so let's go in to adam hamilton and check out what we have so this is this is his information let's x out of this that's not where i wanted to go i want to go into the edit paycheck Drop down three dots, edit paycheck, paycheck. Okay, so there we have it. So now we're gonna say he's a salaried employee. So the salary should be good. If we pull out the trusty calculator, that should be calculating properly. I think we said it was 55,000 a year, 55. divided by 12 that's that month much per month notice we also have the year to date numbers and then we're looking at the mandatory withholdings noting that this should be populating automatically now the social security and medicare are basically flat taxes they won't even let you change those right four five eight three point three three times point oh six two social security and then the four five eight 3.33 times 0 0.0145, there's uh, the Medicare. The federal income tax is pulling in from the information we got from the W-4, possibly filled out by the employee if we were able to email that information to them. This is a more complicated calculation because it's based on the, the individual income tax and, and that's gonna be a mess, which we cannot get exact. And so, uh, so, so that is what it is. Now I'm gonna just make up this number here to tie into our worksheet. So I'm gonna make it be 683.97. I want this to tie into what is on our, our practice problem for the bank reconciliations. The in California taxes, now California has an income tax, but I wanna make it a generic problem and not deal with state information, having this basically just be the federal stuff, which is in essence universal for all states in the United States. Noting if you're outside of the United States, 
then of course you're going to have different payroll tax laws because taxes are the thing that messes up the bookkeeping to be universal. The double entry accounting system is the same. Laws, of course, change. Tax law having the biggest impact on the bookkeeping. Taxes themselves are all, you know, we know the different kinds of taxes. The only question is, what's the kind of tax that's being applied in your area? In the United States, the taxes will differ from state to state. So some states like California, like any, any, there's no tax they don't like, right? So we can, we can come up with any tax and be like, yeah, well, yeah, we throw that one in there. But other states, they might prefer an income stack, tax or a payroll tax or a sales tax. Okay, so I can't get rid of the state disability uh, insurance. They're going to force me to put that one in there. So we will deal with that. And then we've got the employer taxes. So once again, I was trying not to deal with the federal unemployment tax, but they're going to force us to deal with the federal unemployment tax. Here, we've got the Social Security, which matches uh, the employee portion. This is our tax that we're going to have to pay as the employer on the employee's wages, the ETT. And once again, we've got the California SUI employer tax, which is something I didn't want to have to deal with, but they're going to force us to deal with that as well in our practice problem. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the federal income tax to 633.55 to compensate for that $50.42. So I lowered it by $50.42. So I come up to the same uh, total of the withholdings. So what do we have here? This is, this is going to be uh, the income for the current pay period. These are the year to date numbers. This is what we're taking out of the employee's paycheck because they, the government made us do it. These are basically the mandatory withholdings. The government would say it's for their own good. It's for their own good. It's like whatever for, for their own good. You, you go and you take their money. Don't make me do it for crying out loud. If we, so, if we subtract the two, then we get the paycheck uh, that would actually be going out to them. And the government's like, they're too stupid to pay their own taxes. We, you have to do it for them. It's like, whatever. I hire smart people. I don't need, they can deal with their own thing. They deal with their own taxes, you jerk. Anyway, government, there's the year to date numbers. So if we take this number minus the, the total, that's going to be what has been received on a year to date basis. Now, in practice, we might have other types of withholdings, which would be voluntary uh, types of withholdings like like obviously uh health insurance and 401k plans and whatnot but we have a whole nother course or section that dives deeper into payroll if you want to dive into some more weeds that are are there and then on the employer side this is going to be our portion of the taxes which is simply going to increase the liability for what we owe and this will be the actual payroll taxes so when you think about payroll taxes note that these are the payroll taxes to us, the employer. These up here are taxes that we have to pay. They are payroll taxes, however, to the employee. For us, they're just the wages to the employee as the, as the employer. These are just the employee's wages that I have to then give to people based on the employee's, what their debt is, right? So I have to give it to the government on behalf of the employees, but it's really just part of the employee's wages that I'm being forced to distribute on behalf of the employees. Whereas this part is our payroll taxes because we have to pay taxes over and above what the employees earned. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll do another one. Let's go into Erica here and check hers out. So we'll edit her paycheck. And we're going to say that uh, she had, I want to, I want to make the hours. And so we're going to make this to be 150 on the hours this time. And so that's going to come out to 2,400 hourly employee, 2,400 total. And then we're going to say that the federal income tax, I'm going to say, I'm going to change the federal income tax to 360. That would be based on her W-4 information. I'm going to remove the uh, state taxes that I can. And then I'm actually going to reduce that 360 minus the 2640 that I can't get rid of on the state side, which brings me to 
I'm doing this because I wanted to tie out to the to my practice problem uh, where we have bank reconciliations at a future point. So noting once again, the Social Security and Medicare, those they won't even let you change those because those are basically flat taxes. They're not perfectly flat taxes, by the way. If you think about a theory in theory for tax theory people, you know, you know, a lot of people would argue that a flat tax might be a better way to go than more complex type of tax systems. But note that even the Social Security isn't exactly flat because because there's a cap on it. And that's going to cause a problem if they hit the cap and you miss it because you have to look at this year to date number to see where that cap happens. And the Medicare might actually have a place where it starts to increase in basis. And and again, why would there be a cap on Social Security? Because that would look funny. That means that if you make more money, you stop paying taxes at some point. Isn't that a benefit to the rich? And you could say, well, the the thing with Social Security is that it, it kind of acts like we kind of think of Social Security as a retirement plan these days instead of a safety net program, which is one reason the tax is so high right now. So if it's a if it's a retirement plan that we're all forced to pay into instead of like saving for our own retirement, then then you would think the more money you put into it, the the, the more money you would get back from it when you get the benefits at retirement. But of course, that's not exactly the case. The benefits go down as you put more money into it because it's kind of part welfare program and part uh, of a retirement program. And so this is part of the issue. We don't really know what Social Security is these days. We're confused as to as to whether it's a retirement program or not. So anyways, if this is 2,400 times 0 0.062, it's going to be 148.80. And then this one's going to be 2,400 times 0.0145, and that's going to be 3480. And then this is our taxes that we're paying over and above. So this is us taking Erica's money because the government makes us in mandatory withholdings and then paying it on Erica's behalf. This is us paying over and above what Erica earned for our payroll taxes. Uh, so that's going to be that. So let's go ahead and save it. And I think that is what we need to do. So I, I'm hoping that everything is good to go. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. So let's go ahead and preview it. Is it good? We're going to say here's the total payroll. Gross pay gives us our little worksheet. Boom, looks good. Let's go ahead and it's we have we have a submit payroll save for later. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Cross your fingers. Let's run it and then we'll say that I'm not rating it right now. So I think the check numbers are 10022 and uh, 10023, let's say. And so, and then print pay stubs. So uh, if we can check that out. And so here are the pay stubs. So, so, so this is required to provide to the employee even if you don't give them a physical check. Why? Because you have to tell them what they actually earned in total in their total earnings and what was withheld from them. So here's the current earnings. Here's what was taken out of their earnings for California income tax, uh, Medicare, Social Security, California state disability, and the federal income tax to get to their net check. So we don't, we do not have to give them our portion. So we're not including on their paycheck what we also paid on their behalf, our portion of Social Security, Medicare, and the federal unemployment tax, for example. Uh, and we also have to give it on a year to date basis. So you can see this starts to get somewhat tedious because of, we have to provide kind of a lot of detailed information, not just the current paycheck, but the year to date information the year to date information becoming important because of things like the caps, such as the cap on Social Security and the possible added payment for for Medicare. There's a cap on federal unemployment tax and whatnot. So it, it actually gets quite messy, even though every one little component of it is fairly simple. You put them all together and it gets messy. So down download uh, payroll reports. So if we do that, we get our, our total cost. This is the employer reports, tax payments, tax and wage summary, tax liability, uh, uh, total pay, employee reports, payroll summary, payroll summary by employee. Now, if you were doing payroll 
uh, and you wanted to provide these to a client as payroll is provide as done, this is the type of report that you might be receiving, for example, if you had a third party person doing the payroll and then providing you with, with the reports. But we won't generate these now. Uh, we could export them to Excel, which is pretty neat. But let's actually do that. Let's, let's do all of these and I'll show you. I'll, I'll do these employee detail. Let's just do all of them and export it to Excel. Uh, and that's pretty neat because then you get all the payroll reports basically in uh, one place. But you also have a whole lot of payroll reports internally uh, within QuickBooks as well. If you like the Excel format of the reports, you can, of course, use the cute PDF printer to then uh, export the reports to export the reports. So if I then enable the editing here, so we've got the deductions and contributions, uh, the payroll details. So this gives us the total and this gives it by Adam and Erica. So this is quite common and useful to understand that you can see payroll as employee by employee and break out the information that way. But you can also kind of see payroll as though you have one big employee that's a conglomerate of all the other employees and you get and you can think of the journal entry in that format. So total hours, this is the gross pay. And then this is the, the regular pay. And so this is the pre tax uh, deductions, the adjusted gross, and then other pay employee uh, employee. So we finally get down to the the pay here, the total pay and then employee taxes and deductions. So this is what was taken out and the employee taxes total include the federal income tax, social security, Medicare, uh, income, California income tax. This is what was taken out. This sums up to 157819. This number here, uh, employee after tax deductions, net pay. So here's the net pay, which is going to be the total pay minus and this is for both of them each employee and then both of them minus what was deducted and the employer taxes which include the futa the social security medicare this is a pretty good report i like the format of this one because it not only gives you what you see in a pay stub the employee stuff but also the employer taxes something often missing in in some reports that are just giving you information supporting the employee side of things. You've got the payroll summary. This is kind of similar information it looks like, but a different register format. So now you've got Hamilton and Erica. It's in a horizontal format now where you have the gross pay. So here's uh, the, the, the gross pay for uh, February. And so we've got the gross pay for that period, the net pay, the employer taxes, and the total payroll taxes pay method. All right, pretty summarized report. This is uh, tax payments. We don't have any tax payments as of yet. We're gonna, we've just withheld them. We haven't paid them yet. And this is the uh, paycheck wages subtotal and then this is the employer uh the employer taxes so this is the employer taxes that were taken out so it's kind of a summary report this is in a payroll tax and wage so here's the total wages again uh and it doesn't give it it by employee this time but rather gives us simply the uh total wages for the different types of taxes for California PIT, California, California, federal income taxes. So that gives us the total wages, the taxable wages, the tax amount, and the tax percent. Now this becomes important because when you think about your W-2, the total wage box uh, might be different. There's three total wage boxes. If you think about your W-2, one for the type for each type of tax, basically, because you have you have your wages for your federal income tax, which might be different than your Social Security wages because you might have hit the cap, which could be different for like Medicare wages and so on. So then then this is going to be your tax liabilities. So this is what we owe uh, as of now, broken out by the different things that we owe. These are the forms that we're going to be paying with. 
and the total pay. So here's just a summary of the total pay and the employee detail. So you can see there's a lot of detailed information in here, whereas note that if payroll wasn't so complex, if we didn't have all these laws related to payroll, what would payroll look like? It would look like basically plus button, uh, enter an expense form, right? We, we would just shake hands and say, I'm just gonna pay you just like any other vendor. As of the end of the week, we'd wait till it come through the bank feeds and we'll just call it wages expense. That's what payroll should be if it wasn't for all the regulations. But now it's complicated to the point where you have to have a whole separate added pay to deal with the complications of payroll and possibly hire a whole extra payroll processor to deal uh, with the payroll. So it's, it's pretty interesting uh, area. Any case, so now let's go to our balance sheet and run it. And we can see that in here, what has happened thus far, we've got then uh, the check, we should have these two checks in here. Let's go into the checking account and do, 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 payroll checks. We should have the checks. I think I have to bring it up to the 29th. Hold on a second. Bring it up a day. There's 29 days in February 2024. Looking forward to that extra day. So here's our payroll checks. Boom, boom. If we drill down on them, it's not going to take us to that payroll data input, but rather actually they won't even let us drill down on the check because they're payroll checks. Okay. Let's go back. And the other side's going to go to the expense. Generally, we're going to run it. Do I have, I need to bring it up a day to the 29, 29. Let's go down and say that we have then the wages. So here's the wages going into that. And we have our two paychecks that have been generated. They won't let me drill down to the source document. That's for the, for the uh, gross pay and the difference between the, the wages and what we saw on the check is of course what we took from them in withholdings back to the balance sheet. And we took that from them and put it in here into our liability accounts, such as the federal taxes and so on 941, that's social security, Medicare and, and um, social security, Medicare and federal income tax. So we took that money from them and we owe it to the government. You can see why you get in trouble if you, if you don't pay these taxes. Because now the government says you not only didn't pay your taxes, you stole that money from the employees and didn't pay the taxes on their behalf like you're supposed to. And it's like, well, I have cash flow problems and I can't pay the taxes, but you made me withhold the taxes. I didn't want to withhold it, right? And you get into a messy situation. So you don't want to do that with payroll taxes. You want to pay the payroll taxes and not get in trouble with, with those because then you get all, then everything gets messy. So then also we have taxes for our side of the taxes. So in here and the other side of that is over here on uh, the payroll taxes. So payroll taxes here, these are just our portion of the taxes, our portion of Social Security, Medicare, and the federal unemployment tax, FUTA. Now, before we wrap this up, I'm going to make one more adjustment to deal with that federal unemployment tax and the SDI taxes they made us record so that we can tie into our worksheet so that in future sections, everything will work out when we get to the bank reconciliations, for example, in a future course or section. So I'm going to make these adjustments into a separate account as we did when we ran the first month payroll for the payroll liability adjustment here. And then we'll also see it over here on uh, the payroll tax adjustment. So I'm just going to do this with a journal entry. So I'm going to go back on over here. We could do it by going into the actual register because those are uh, liability, they're balance sheet accounts. So I'm going to go into the, do, 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 where am I going to the transactions? And then in the chart of accounts, I can pick either one of those uh, account or no, I have to pick the liability account. So the payroll adjustment liability account is what I am looking for. So here we have it. It has a register to it. So let's go into the register and enter the journal entry this way. I'm going to select the drop down and make a journal entry. And I'm going to make it as of 022924. Same date as the payroll. This is uh, ADJ for taxes 
let's say taxes adjustment. I don't want to make it ADJ because that's going to be our, we'll talk about that later. This is a decrease. This is going to be for 228.66. And the other side is going to go to the payroll, payroll tax, tax adjustment to this adjustment account here. So it's going to be going there and let's go ahead and save it. So I'll save that. What does that do? If I go into my balance sheet and run the report, then we have in this adjustment account, this adjustment, if I go into that, we can see then that we have a journal entry. If I go into the journal entry, it's gonna now show in debit and credit format as opposed to the register. I'll copy the, the description and put it on both sides. And then I'll save and close that and go back. And the other side is on the income statement running it. And I made an adjustment in a separate sub account here for the payroll taxes in that one as well with a, a journal entry. So there is that one. Now note that if you're tying out, remember that these reports over here basically are the reports that are going to be used to populate the 941s, the 940 given to the government and the W2s and the W3s given to employees and the government. So these, what you want then is these forms to tie out to what you're also going to give to the government, which is going to be your income taxes for your actual business. So note that at, at the end of the year, what you'll typically want to do is take something like uh, this summary report and make sure that the totals in the wages, think of it as one journal entry, the total for the wages should tie out to basically what you have in your wages account on your income statement. And then you should be able to tie out to what is currently the liabilities that are outstanding on your balance sheet. Noting that if you did this on a cash based system and had someone else processing the payroll, then you could just wait till everything clears the bank, record it as one account, payroll expense, and then possibly use this report, which would then be provided not by QuickBooks, but by the external payroll provider to then make the adjustments to your, to your books as of the end of the year for income tax reporting uh, or uh, external reporting purposes, right? So if you had someone else do the payroll, in other words, they would give you a report like this, which you can enter possibly as though they were one employee doing one journal entry per pay period, or possibly simply staying on a cash based system, waiting till the end of the year to make that adjustment when you need it for tax time, or possibly external reporting. But to do that, you need a team of people that know what they're doing yourself as the bookkeeper, possibly a CPA firm that can make this periodic adjustment and a payroll provider that can handle all of the human resources and payroll and the pay stubs and all that kind of uh, stuff. But just note that you want these things to tie out because if they don't tie out, then you're giving something to the government that doesn't match, right? If you give something to the government where you're your financial statements reported on at least your tax return don't match what you're giving to the government in terms of the quarterly payroll reports 941s and the yearly w3 then you know that's inviting possibly an audit or something like that they might be able to just process that without hum too much human interference and figure out that something doesn't seem right So this is where we stand now on the balance sheet. So here's where we are on the balance sheet. Here is the income statement. Let's run that one. And then we'll take a look at the trial balance. Remember in the trial balance is the balance sheet on top of the income statement. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, try changing the date. See if it's a date range issue. If it's a paycheck issue, then you'll actually have to void the paycheck and process it again, right? We've got the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. So the assets are starting from the checking account and going down to the machinery and equipment. That's what the company has. The liabilities 
are people third party that have claim to the value of those assets starting at accounts payable going down through the payroll liabilities to unearned revenue most of them being credit balances and then we have our claim to the assets in the form of the balance sheet accounts of owner's investment similar to the uh, common stock if it were a corporation and owner's equity similar to retained earnings if a corporation and then the income statement starting with the income as credits minus the expenses as debits which would give us net income that would roll into the owner's equity or retained earnings if it was a corporation and quickbooks does that automatically on a year-by-year -year basis so if i go from 101025 to 101025 and run it you can see that it's basically rolled in here to owner's equity the equivalent of retained earnings for a sole proprietor